What you're about to experience are my opinions and truths. I'm suggesting their possibilities for you to consider, in which you can then come up with your own logical conclusions. Welcome out, everyone, all of you great decoders out there around the world, wherever you may be, both male and female. My name is Logan, and this is Decode Your Reality, and today we're going to be breaking down and decoding Pi and Phi. This will be Pi Phi decoded these two mathematical giants on the world stage we're going to be breaking these down and ladies and gentlemen this one's another gem i feel so get strapped in put on a pair of headphones block out the outside world really get immersed in this presentation about to show you some stuff again to knock your decoding socks off so let's jump right into this let's jump into some Pure math. I want to show you how special these two numbering systems, mathematical equations are on the world stage. Let's begin with this 1.61, this 161. And what you'll notice is when you bring it into the string of pi, the 1.61, 161, look at where it appears at the 1610th decimal digit of pi. So we can see that these two mathematical equations essentially are what I like to say in bed together. And when you look at, you know, the golden ratio, not 161, but the one would be right before the decimal point. And it's right in the very beginning, right there. <clears throat> and look at the, expressions on this. Pure math. Let's keep going with this. How about the 314 representing pi inside the golden ratio? Because we measured the 161 in the digits of pi. When we bring it into the string of the golden ratio, 314 appears at the 947th decimal digit. If you know what the 947 means, there's the 47. It's the 900 of the 47. These, are, these numbers are very consistent with their expressions. If you know what you're looking for, but the 947, look at this, bam! It's, it's the 161st prime number, the 947, found from the string of pi. How about that? So you can see how perfectly mathematically precise this code is. This is the source code. When you take the primes now, to end this piece of it, the intro, for pi phi decoded. Let's look at the primes and the numbers associated with them, shall we? The 2083 is the 314th prime. And then the 947, we showed that, the 161st prime. And when you add those up, ladies and gentlemen, you get the number 3030. So there's that notorious, that infamous, probably should say the famous, 33. And, and you can see that it's not Masonic. Has nothing to do with these groups. Nothing. This is the source code. Pure mathematics right here. Staring us all in the face. This is how beautifully 
and precise this is, how eloquent this whole numbering system is. There's that 33 right there. And I showed this with my, if you haven't seen my simulation decoded, many of you have, thank you very much for the support. But in my decode of simulation theory, I broke down the word simulation and the sine and cosine waves, which make up the string of pi. And then measuring out the sine and cosine waves, connecting it to the elements in the periodic table. And there was that 33 again. So when you look at the properties, properties of pi and phi, it makes up the simulation that we're in because it's purely mathematical that we're all living out. And this was like absolute to me. All right, let's now get into the actual presentation. So that was the intro. Let's get into the topics of conversation and go through this to really give you the gems that I found during this uh, discovery of mine. So the zero, we covered the intro. Number one, we're going to break down the topic of this decode, pi phi. The brother and sister, the mother and father, however you want to look at that. Number two, Adam of love. Number three, recycled dragon. Number four, the last topic. This is going to be going right into my prison planet. Those of you that have been following along, my prison planet series spit you out. Is there a way to get out of the game? Well, I believe I found the way but it'll be up to you to figure it out beyond what I say, because these are my opinions and truths. And then number five, of course, lastly, what did you see? Keep your comments coming. We'd love to hear your comments. Those of you that are new, welcome out. You know, I have a lot of new subscribers. I have a lot of questions. Just know I'm not a huge fan of email and like trying to comment. It's just, there's so much. Just try to watch as many of it as you can. One day it will click and you will start to see what you're supposed to see, but you got to get through that whole process. You can't, you may not just find it in just one video. Getting into the first topic, the actual presentation topic, the title itself, Pi Phi. Here we go. So here's the marrying of the two. The marrying of the two. And I decided to use blue and yellow <clears throat> because blue is, you know, the fifth color and yellow is the third color. That's the 53 and that's the I. Oh, dying. And perhaps how we all got here. But nonetheless, that's kind of a little symbolic measurement there. But when you bring these two layers together and we bring in pure math again, 3.14, the measurement of pi can also be observed as 35. And then the golden ratio, the measurement of nature itself, the 1.61, when you measure it down, is the 17. So we have 35 and 17. And when you bring in the elements on the periodic table, which I've already done in my simulation decoded, because this is tied to the simulation, it's chlorine and bromine making up pi and phi. And there are many sinks to this. Of course, there is the 35 measuring pi itself. And then there's gold because you see the whole purpose of living is alchemy. It's turning lead into gold. And it, that means your energy is being transferred somewhere like feeding a battery and it's led to gold and that's what the whole aspect of alchemy is all about and then chlorine tied to, if you haven't seen my bloodline decoded please check it out i feel like this element was a representation of the very first possible blood type which would be the o blood type but chlorine has an average weight of 35 and so these really fit together in the simulation decoded that it came out with but how about that they're in bed with pi and phi by the protons of these two elements. And I'm going to break down on even more, but when you reduce these numbers down through numerology, 35 becomes an eight, 17 becomes an eight, bring them together. And we have that infamous 88, 88 is tied to radium, the element of Ra, which was a sun God. 88 is also the two Taurus fields. When you bring them together, it forms the four leaf clover. It's also tied to the element yttrium. And we can't leave out 1985's classic movie, Back to the Future, and the DeLorean, Michael J. Fox, Doc Bronner, 88 miles an hour for time travel. So there's some links there as well. And then we get into the 52, because when you add up 35 and 17, pretty simple math, it's going to give you 52. And there's the infamous 52, and it's tied to 
Prison Planet, which, again, if you haven't watched my Prison Planet series, I have three Prison Planets. Please check those out. Some of the most truth bomb central decodes I've ever done. Perhaps showing you the way out of here, Prison Planet 2 especially. Prison Planet being a 52, tied to Pi and Phi. Pi and Phi make up our reality. Why I know this is, here's the match. See, we live in a magnetic and electric universe. And you'll see that it's not just the total 52 that make up Prison Planet and magnetic and electric, but it's the actual 26 that's a match to both all four words. 26, 20, and remember we have iron in our blood. Iron is, ma iron is magnetic. And it's also tied to electricity. And the, the yod heh vah the ancient Israelite God of the Bible is 26 through numerology. The word house, like as the house always wins, the house equals 26. So many sinks with this 26. And it's tied to the element iron. Very, very big. So there you have it with that. <clears throat> so when we really bring down or when we bring in the, the, uh, the numerology of saying pi and phi, 314161, this is what we get for an outcome, 61 and 43. Now, these are both, uh, these are both um, prime numbers. 61 is the 18th prime number, which is tied to Jesus and Christ. They both equal the number 18. And then 43 is the 14th prime number tied to time, God, and Satan. 14, all in the same cipher. But what's really interesting is when you bring alchemy into this again, and it, it really takes a turn because 61 which is the 18th prime number tied to Jesus and the Christ and all that through numerology is the Titan called Prometheus and this element called Prometheum, which was the Titan who molded men out of clay. That whole story, Greek mythology, I think it's more truth than mythology. And here's kind of the, the humor in this, right? Because 43 from the golden ratio is tied to this element technetium and this element right here when you look at it through the royal society with the whole technetos which from the greek means artificial which means it's made from the hands of men and how very fitting right because prometheum was the god who molded men from clay how would he do that with his hands pi and phi you you, you can't miss this folks that's why alchemy is where it's at to get your truth Besides numerology, you must connect numerology with alchemy. And you get the truth bombs. You get the truth bombs. And then when you add up Prometheum and Technetium, you get the number 243. You're going to get the 104 if you take the protons, which is going to lead to the G-O-D. If you go to numerology, uh, oops, G-O-D in the Francis Bacon. There it is, 104. But when you take the 243, it's linked to this element called Americium. And it's one half of the I am. If you've been paying attention, the I am. And the I am is really important. If you haven't seen my Dios, Decoded, please check that out. The Spanish spelling for the G O D, Dios. Well, if you add these up, get out your calculators, you're going to get three, six, nine, which is why I got the key here. Because this is the keys to the universe. The I am that I am, and it's part of pi and phi. These two right here, found from the alchemy of 145 and 98 giving you 243 then you get the 61 on the back end that's going to read right back to prometheum so prometheus has a lot to do with this reality the whole greek mythology story prometheus and epimetheus if you haven't seen my pineal gland decoded they're in there we're tied to prometheus and epimetheus forethought and afterthought molding men out of clay creating mankind itself, stealing fire and giving it to the humans, which obviously represents knowledge, pi and phi. These are the mathematical equations of our reality. So let's get into the next topic now called the atom 
of love. The atom of love. I'm going to start off with this right here. I had to make this. So if you go to gematronator.com, you will not be able to find this because Derek doesn't have the modern Greek cipher there. But the finalized modern Greek alphabet is right here. Pi is 16 and phi is 21. I'm going to show you the alternative, the old style Greek, just a minute. But it's 16 and 21. And it's tied to these two words right here, which I feel make up pi and phi. It's, this is the two emotions that we have as human beings, fear and love. Everything else is subordinate to that. These are the two. This is the yin yang. If you're not creating through love, you're creating through fear and vice versa. When you add these up, 16 and 21, you're going to get 37. If you've been paying attention, my prison planets, here's the recycle. I have a topic called Recycled Dragon in here just a little bit. But this is the recycling process, the anomaly that I found last year in the string of pi. 19, 37, 46. Which is actually going to be more numbers than that. But there's the 37 right there. And 37 is tied to the eye in the sky. You see, pi and phi lead to the eye in the sky the makeup of our reality. Moving forward into this, we get into the tarot to get some pictures. We think in pictures, so the tarot does a great job of that. Pi and phi, 16 and 21, here it is. Here is how we all got here. Love and fear, pi and phi. And it's the world card being the 21 tied to the phi, the word love equals 21, and then fear 16, and you can't make up a better card for fear. Here it is. The tower, the destructive tower, pi and phi. So we come through the hole. And how do we get through the hole? Well, through the orgasm. That's why you probably saw that in my numerology earlier. Through the orgasm. And there's so many, orgasm is 20, which is going to be tied to duality. It's all there if you're just willing to look at this. Pi and phi. And then when you do the numerology of the tower in the world, you get the number 74. 74 is tied, if you've been paying attention, it's tungsten, a.k.a. Wolfram. The wolf. Feed the wolf. That's right, because pi and phi, the mathematical equations, the expressions of our reality, through our emotional responses, through the frequencies, through the energetic vibrational frequencies we give off, it's feeding the wolf. And it's that 74. And it's the atom of love. You see, these are the words that match up with the 16 and 21. See, we're made up of these atoms, which is where you're going to get the first human being from. The word hell equals 16. Think about it. The word hell equals 16. Look, look at what this represents. Being casted down into hell. Hell is 16. And the atom is what we're all made up of, in a sense, because we're... You know, the humans, light beings, slow down into physical matter. And we're all made, obviously, from love. We enter the portal. We enter down into this reality. That's the Greek modern. That's the modernized version of pi and phi. Well, let's now get into the recycled dragon. I'm going to get into the, the older Greek. The antiquity Greek, so to speak. And here it is. So these numbers, this is why if you're a fan of decoding... You're like, well, wait a minute. Is it 16? Is it 17? It's going to be both. Just like, is it 365 days of the year or is it a 364? It's both. Numbers will encroach. They will bleed into one another. So essentially, pi is 16 and 17, which is going to give you the 33. But it's the 17 and the 23. This is the older style Greek before it was finalized. And this has its own set of truths. But essentially, it's going to feed the same machine, but let's break this down. Pi and phi decoded, it's 17 and 23. And how about that? They're both prime numbers. 17 is the seventh prime number. 23 is the ninth prime number. When you bring those together through alchemy, what do we get? Well, we get gold. And that's what pi and phi is all about. Again, going back to the true essence of what it's like to be a human being, it's transmutation by way of our energetic currency, what you give off as a human being. See, it's all a matter of what you're worth. Not what you have in the bank, but what you're worth inside of you as a human being, giving off your energetic currency. And that's what this whole essence of being a human being is all about, through pi and phi. But it's gold. 
And gold has got an average weight of 196. There's the yin yang. It's the 100 and then the 96 joining with the 100. And it's the 196. And you get it on both sides of the decimal right there if you know what you're looking for. But if you break these down on a singular basis, <clears throat> besides looking at bringing them together, forming gold, you get nitrogen and fluorine from the prime numbers of 17 and 23. And what's interesting is, you know, nitrogen is the primary layer to what we breathe as air. We breathe about 78 to 79% nitrogen and then 20, 21% oxygen. And then there are some other small amounts of other elements as well. But nitrogen is the dominant element we breathe in as air. I shouldn't even say element because we don't breathe in the metal, but Nitrogen is the air we breathe, and it's the dominant one. How about that? And, you know, N is the 14th letter, and the word time equals 14. When you come down into time, you start breathing nitrogen along with oxygen, and oxygen, oxygen oxidates, and then you get into the decay process of being a human being. But then you get fluorine. This is tied to Pandora's box. I have another decode, Pandora's box part two coming out. I'm going to show you how fluorine's tied into that because nine is tied to Saturn's magic square. But there is the combination of these two. And when you do the numerology of these two, nitrogen and fluorine, you're going to get yin yang. So this is perfectly balanced. Again, synchronizing numerology with alchemy and primes and mathematics into pi and phi, the pure mathematical expression of the source code. It's the 69. You, you couldn't pick a better number to represent pi and phi. They're, they feed off one another, the six and then the nine, the yin yang. And it's right there for all, us, all of us to observe the source code playing out. So let's now bring these two numbers together and take a closer look. Pi and phi through the older style Greek, the antiquity Greek, so to speak, the Greek of antiquity, the first representations of the alphabet. And 1723, when you bring it together, is the 269th prime number. 206. So how about that? The 1723 is the 200. And, and what do you see right there? You see, when you know how to read numbers, this is this is straight up decoding, ladies and gentlemen, if you're a fan of decoding. So beyond just saying, yeah, it's the 269th prime number, it's 269 added to the 200. So if you know what the 200 means, tied to duality, and then what does the 69 mean? Tied to duality, because it's yin yang, you will know what these numbers really are expressing. Not just looking at it as the 269th prime number, but let's keep going. Let's now bring alchemy into this. The 269 is tied to this element right here called hassium. And again, these are bridges. Those of you that are new, like why would you take alchemy and tie it into numbers? Because these are all tied together. They're all telling you part of the source code. We're made up a lot of these elements. This element right here is a synthetic element by combining other elements. But nonetheless, these provide the clues that we need to figure this reality out, I feel. And Hassium got 108 protons. The 18 is going to be tied to the Christ again. But the picture that they decided to use at the Royal Society of Chemistry right here is this dragon. Let me just show you really quickly. We go to the Royal Society of Chemistry right here. And we go to Hassium. Here it is. And the reason why this dragon was chosen is because you go to the origin. Here are some more clues. And you'll see that the name is derived from the German state of Hesse, where Hassium was first made. So there's the, the clue. And you can get more clues right here. You know, like Peter. Peter is tied to the church. There's so many layers to this that we can observe. So many layers that we can observe with this. But the dragon is the recycled dragon, which makes up pi and phi. And it's all about theology with this, because in theology, it says that the great dragon was hurled down. You know that scripture. The great dragon was, what is the dragon? Well, most interpretations are going to say it's the devil. But see, I feel those interpretations are completely wrong. Not wrong in the sense they're wrong, but in the sense of it's watered down truth. 
because the great dragon that was hurled down is far beyond labeling it as some kind of entity. Because pi and phi are the vibrational frequencies. They are magnetic and electric, which is what the dragon is. Notice that the great dragon was hurled down is the 27 letters tied to the dragonfly card in the medicine deck, the 52 cards of the animals, insects, and reptiles. Here they are right here. If you're a fan of these, I'm a huge fan of these. These were created in 1988. And there's the dragonfly card number 27. If you want these graphics, by the way, just send me an email and request them from me. My email is decodeyourreality at gmail.com. Just make sure you put your name there so I know who we're dealing with here. I get a lot of people that just send me the cards, you know, and that's it. But anyway, these have so much value in describing and narrating this reality. And there it is, the 27. Tied to the word currency is 27. So dra you, you, you notice that, you know, the dragonfly, when you go to numerology and you keep your eye on that Chaldean, but there it is, currency is 27. You see, so what does the great dragon mean? It means currency. And what is currency having to deal with? It's having to deal with pi and phi. The golden ratio, which is the measurement of the Fibonacci sequence, as well as nature, and then pi, which is electric and magnetic. So the dragon is the sine wave, the sine and cosine wave, and it's found from both of these great mathematical equations, pi and phi. And here it is, right off of the Royal Society of Chemistry. See, this image was inspired by the coat of arms for the German state of Hesse, which gives this element its name. And look at what the great dragon was hurled down equals. So am I stretching anything here? No, not, not when you know what you're looking for. 108. And there's the protons for Hassium. And it's got 27 letters. I mean, folks, if you really use common sense and logic, you can see that, see, man didn't code this. Even the people that created these cards, they're being used to create the cards. They didn't know it. But they obviously were being used because we can easily synchronize this stuff perfectly, as well as the Royal Society of Chemistry, just with these examples right here. And so are we just recycled? Is the dragon just recycled? The word Michael equals 22. Michael fought the dragon. It's tied to titanium and the titans and the fallen angel story. But do we just get recycled back into this game and we just change characters? Well, that's possible, which means that you should be the best little devil you can be down here. So you can level up in this reality, because if we do get recycled back in, well, it's very possible that if you aren't do being the best little devil you can be, you're not going to level up. So if we do get recycled back in, obviously you want to check a lot of things off the box. Be a good person. Don't be a dink. Stop blaming other people. Take your life into your own hands and be the best little devil you can be. But anyway, this was kind of the big kicker for all this. The ironclad nail in the coffin for me was I decided to obviously go to the latitude longitude on the map. And I, as I have been showing how important and valuable the latitude longitude is when describing our reality. X marks the spot. And so here is the German state of Hesse. It's called Hesse in the city. And look at what the latitude longitude is, 50 degrees north, 9 degrees east. When you add those up, simple math gives you the game of life. So I see these I know are absolutes for me. Like I don't need anybody's permission. I don't need anybody to quit. Like you can question it all you want, but you should keep watching. And this is not be, me being cocky or like this is me standing in this truth with absolutes here. Because I've done this long enough for many, many years now to know the source code's playing out. And it's already written in the script. And these, it doesn't mean that the game started in Germany. This is just a clue to tell you we're in a game. And the great dragon that got hurled down, you that's what you're part of. That's what I'm part of. We're part of frequencies. We're part of magnetism and electricity. We're part of the simulation with this number 59. I mean, you really can't miss it, ladies and gentlemen, when you start to look at this code the way I'm showing it here. So let's get into the last topic now. And this is going to kind of be linking to my Prison Planet Part 2. And I have a slide for that right now. 
And perhaps, ladies and gentlemen, perhaps the way to get out of this game, if there, if there is such a thing, which there are many layers to it, it's not just like, oh, I found the key and I'm going to get out of here. No, it, it, there's a lot of layers to this. One of them, one of the requirements, one of the requisites, stop playing their game. Stop giving your energy and stop doing the blame game. That is one of the requisites, I feel, to first establish your foothold in getting out of this game. But let's talk about spitting you out. What does this mean? Because you're in the belly of the beast. That's what you're in. That's what we're in. We're in the belly of the beast, the great fish bladder. So I decided to look at the etymology of both pi and phi. And this is what I found. And this was huge for me huge. The big takeaway was this right there from Pi. You see, my last name is Payette. And I showed in my prison planet part two, why I'm supposed to be delivering this information to, to all of you. And don't, and don't even look into anything beyond that. I'm not trying to, I'm not a Messiah. I'm just a free Logan. That's it. Okay, I, I'm just doing my job. I'm just showing you my responsibilities here. But how about that? Right there, mouth. Pi is the mouth. And it goes right into this. This was this one of the screenshots, one of the slides of my Prison Planet Part 2. And this was on the topic exit. And it was this scripture in Revel. And I'm not, again, I want to be, put this disclaimer out there. It doesn't mean the Bible is the authoritative book to tell you how to win the game. It's one of the texts. It's one of the spell books that you have the Upanishads, the ancient text of Shinto, the Egyptian book of the dead. There's a lot of other ancient texts besides this one, folks. You got the book of Enoch. You got the Nag Hammadi libraries. There are so many, the Quran. There are many other ones. They all are owned by the same source. We cannot separate all these because that's what, that's what mankind has done and mankind's not doing it. Mankind's being used and controlled. And that's the game. You see, if you've come to this point and you've had the realization that you're in a game, you're in a simulation, well, it changes everything. Because a lot of you don't want to be in the game anymore. But you gotta, you gotta make peace with this game. Stop doing the blame game. Enjoy your life as best as you can. But this right here was a huge revelation for me. And it's not a play on words considering this is taken from the last book, 66 book of the Bible, Revelation. But I broke this down. I had to modify it because it was gonna reduce that down to the seven. But it's the 58 tied to the puppet master. You see the puppet master, that big word is 58. And this is the scripture in Revelation 3 verses 16. It says, because you are lukewarm and you're neither cold nor hot, I will spew thee out of my mouth. So the interpretation from a pastor or from some, somebody up on stage trying to do a sermon, you know what they're going to tell you? Oh, you don't want to be lukewarm. Oh no, you don't want to be lukewarm. Well, you want to do, of course you do. That's exactly where you want to be. You see, lukewarm is going to be balanced. That's going to be neutral. You came into this world as a baby and a baby is neutral. And that's lukewarm. You don't want it cold, hot and cold is playing the game. Playing the game at its deepest levels. So I feel this scripture right here telling you how to get out of the game is you want to be lukewarm doesn't say don't be lukewarm it says because thou art lukewarm i will spit thee out of my mouth you're in the belly of the beast the mouth is the world card the mouth is the portal and the mouth and the portal have everything to do with right here as i showed right there i mean how much more conviction do you need folks to see this code and we're playing a game you need to realize that we're playing a game this is a game called life Okay, it's a, it's, you can slice or dice it any way you want, but you're playing a game. We're in a real movie and it's a game and you got to figure it out. And this right here was tied to prison planet, the 127, adding these up through alchemy. This is where it's at alchemy, how important alchemy is, but it's out of the mouth being lukewarm 7.3, 7.4. That's lukewarm. That's balance. 
And so what really led to this right here, ladies and gentlemen, this is pi and phi through the Greek. And again, going back to the etymology, there it is from the ancient Greek right there, pi and phi, the original, besides the first letters. And it gives us 31 and 37, adding up to the number 68. And this was absolute gem drop right here from me. And I have more to go on this. So I'm just going to leave you with this to kind of wrap your mind around. I have another slide or two, but it's this element called erbium. Now, erbium, when you look at erbium on the periodic table, it's going to show a picture of this vase with pink in the background. And what they're going to tell you, the clue, when you go down to the uses and properties, it says the image reflects the use in producing pink glazes in ceramics. So, you know, when you go to numerology and you type in the word pink, keep your eye on that Chaldean to the far right, it's the number 16. And that's a direct match to this right here, hell. You see, pink represents hell, which is why the Simpsons, I feel, had the pink car that Homer drove around. Represents hell. 16 is hell. Pink is hell. And this element right here has the pink telling you that you go down into the hole and you go down into hell. And really, it's this is a huge, huge, huge discovery. And there's more to go with this. I'm just going to mention this and highlight it. The boiling point of erbium in Kelvin, which is the measurement of the sun's temperature, is pi itself. And if you can wrap your mind around, those of you that are advanced in decoding, you can have fun with this. You can start to tinker with this. And all I'm going to tell you is, is if you subtract these two numbers from one another to get the lukewarm number, you'll have more keys to the kingdom right there. Now, erbium is very interesting because when you go to the oxidation states and isotopes, there's many of them. It's going to give the most common ones. It's got more than this, but you'll see that's got the 166, tetragrammaton equals 166, 22 is tied to titanium, titanium is the 47th, uh, 22nd element, which has an average weight of 47, tetragrammaton is 47, so it's all right there tied to the fallen angel story. Now, there's so many ways to look at this. The average or the most abundant is 165, and look at what the abundance is. 33%. These are all subtle clues, folks. But when you start to look at these layers, you get way more keys to the kingdom with this erbium element right there. But the average is 167. And 167 is a prime number as well. Actually, let me just show all of you that. Go to numberempire.com. 167 is the 39th prime number. And remember, Revelation is 39 folks you see this is all telling us the code 167 is the 39 prime number and when you go to this slide right here back to what i revelations 39 folks you see 39's yttrium there's the 88 what's pi and phi when you reduce it down 35 and 17 88 the revelation revelation means waking up the, hey, you wouldn't believe this revelation I had. Yeah, the revelation I'm showing you is the prison planet. And the, inter the proper interpretation is you want to be lukewarm. You want to be lukewarm. That is balanced to get out of this game. If you're hot or cold, you'll get recycled back in. But it's this erbium. Erbium is a 20. Here's the dead giveaway. Erbium is 20. Duality is 20. You see? In the game you go through this erbium as the clue. And I showed you the melting and the boiling point, And it's down into duality you go. It's down into duality that you go. And I'm just going to show all of you one last slide. And this right here, I have not released this officially to the public. I've shown this a few times. This is the periodic table flipped and this has delivered to me so much truth you may want to take a snapshot of this start studying it for yourself but when you start to look at this like a bingo chart 
you have a lot of clues in here. And when you look at Erbium, you see, it says, I'm going to spit you out of thy mouth. Well, this row right here, this row is in the throat chakra, which is the representation of the mouth. And Erbium sits right here on row six and row 14. And that's 614. And what's interesting, ladies and gentlemen, when I did this decode, I finished this decode up and here it is, I'm doing this. I'm not gonna get this out to the 15th, but I found this information on June 14th. And this element right here sits in space 614, which is 614. And this is, remember, Donald John Trump, his birthday, 614. So it's tied to Donald John Trump and Erbium. And this is the architect coming down here and becoming man. This is just another clue. And if you want to get out of this game, this is the big takeaway. I will spit you out of thy mouth. This right here, folks, the 100's right in this row. If you've been paying attention, the 100, here's lead. We become lead to gold. There's erbium. There's the number 50 and God we trust is 50. Tied to tin, there's tin. And then you get the 32, which is tied to the 72 angels and demons. You get silicon, the number 14 tied to time, God and Satan. And then you get the finalized element in this row, carbon number six, 666. Folks, this chart right here has given me so much truth. I can't even begin to tell you. This is the first time I'm actually officially releasing this to the public where I've actually highlighted something and I, need to come out with a decode on this. But if you can get your mind around this, folks, this is advanced, obviously. But I'm telling you, this right here will deliver you to you a lot of the truth in this reality. And if you want to get spit out of duality, you need to become lukewarm. Right there. And lukewarm is neutral. And hot and cold is playing the game. The blame game, the finger pointing, trying to push up against the resistance. You want to get spit out of the mouth. You want to be just like you came into this world, neutral, just like a baby. All right, folks. And the last thing I wanted to point out, just to be, just to finalize my point here, as mankind is being used, this is another perfect example that we're playing out a predestined script. So if you've made it this far, congratulations. You wanted it bad enough. The analytics for Google, for YouTube 14% of all people make it to the end where you're at right now. That's it. 14, 15%. So you're the minority. This right here is absolute proof that mankind's being used. We're living in a script. Here's the guy who discovered erbium. He discovered the other elements, lanthanum and terbium, which are other big ones, but erbium. And here's when he was born, September 10th. And here's the seventh, September 10th card. It's the Ace Diamonds card, card number 27. And we go right that, we match it up to the, L, the Dragonfly card. The great dragon was hurled down. I mean, are you kidding me? So what more proof do you need? You see, the way we get into this world, the big clue, a big clue is Erbium, which is pink, tied to the hell. And this guy, the great dragon tied to Pi and Phi, this guy discovered it. See the clues, folks? Even this is 109, which is the 29th prime number. 29 is tied to Yaldabaoth. Yaldabaoth the Gnostic Demiurge, tied to the Yodei Vahe. They're all the same. But it's the way in and the way out, folks. It's Pi and Phi. And the way out is to become lukewarm, become neutral. All right, ladies and gentlemen, so what did you see during this presentation? I felt like this was a massive discovery in all of my research. I mean, I've been saying that on some other decodes, but this was just an extension of Prison Planet Part 2. But obviously, you could see the facets of this and how important this decode is. Pi and Phi, this is all how we get in here, possibly how we get out. But you got to be neutral. You got to be neutral, non judgmental. Not pointing the finger. But what did you see during this presentation? Would love to hear your observations. I have so much more to keep going. 
uh, on all of this. I have so many more decodes coming out. So I appreciate each and every one of you here. Thank you all for your donations. Those of you that are Patreons, thank you so very much. Those of you that are interested in a personal reading, I do have selected dates left in June. Send me an email, decodeyourreality at gmail.com. So until next time, ladies and gentlemen, we will see you later.